Since the high-intensity beam of light, known as a laser, was invented half a century ago, the uses it's been put to have multiplied dramatically. From delicate surgery to scanning your shopping, from manufacturing to military applications. What it does is converts the spin to angular. Now the team conducting laser research in this laboratory in Pretoria have achieved what they say is a massive leap forward in thinking about lasers. For years we've been working and designing laser systems where we have two mirrors and the light bounces back and forward between the mirrors. When you think about a conventional laser like the one on the table here, what the laser gives out is static, it's fixed, you can do nothing about it. If you want a different output, you buy a different laser. We wanted a way of, with a click of a mouse, to change what comes out of a laser. In essence, they've developed a laser capable of changing the shape of its own beam. And one of the many uses they envisage for it is to tackle one of the most pressing challenges in communications, to increase bandwidth. The digital laser could do so with the patterns of light it creates. And you could send these patterns down the fibre. If you can record the patterns on the other side, you have just increased the bandwidth of the fibre. By how much? However many patterns you encode the information in. It's limitless. It's projected that we're going to hit a bandwidth crunch within the next five years. People are downloading more videos and talking on cell phones. We need new technologies. We have our laser output on this mirror here, so the laser will come out all the way to an LCD screen. And that was the breakthrough, using a liquid crystal display in place of one of the mirrors, fed with images from a computer. Sandile Ntobu is the researcher who proved that the digital laser could work. So as you change the picture, the laser will produce different modes, uh, mode shapes depending on the picture that you put on LCD screen. And that information is going, being directed into the heart of the laser itself? Yes. The shaping is done inside the laser. There's no external beam shaping. We know that many groups have tried to do this, and they probably hit the same barrier as we did. If you don't know something can work, the question is how long do you keep trying? Do you try for a day, a month, a year? If you don't believe it can work, then you stop too soon. And uh, we, we didn't stop too soon. It was very exciting when I did it and I did the graph and everything. I kept quiet, I didn't say anything. And when he brought this graph into my office, I knew immediately that it had worked. It was very good, I must say, <laughs> to be able to actually plan it at the end of the day. I would hope in the years to come that we see many, many groups all over the world building these devices, and I'm sure they will dream of applications that we've never thought of. They're particularly keen here to ensure that Africa sees the benefit of this groundbreaking technological discovery and the practical ways it's used in the years ahead, in the economic gains it could bring to the continent, and in the further development of scientific skills of this kind. The digital laser, they point out here, will probably always be behind-the-scenes technology, but they believe it won't be long before we all see its impact.